Hi, in this video, we will distinguish between models, theories, and laws. The textbook does address this distinction. A model is a representation of something that is often too difficult to display directly. A theory is an explanation for patterns in nature. And a law uses concise language to describe a generalized pattern. Now, what do these words mean? To make these distinctions clear, we really need a concrete example. So for this example, we go to the models of the hydrogen atom. This is a fat. PHET simulation called models of the hydrogen atom. So you probably have heard of an atom before. There have been many versions of atomic theory dating from the time of ancient Greeks. Now, no one has ever seen an atom in an experiment, which is what this simulation is illustrating. You have a vapor cell of hydrogen gas, which is invisible. You send in some light and observe how this light interacts with this invisible hydrogen gas. You've seen some light particles reflect off. <laughs> An atomic theory starts out with the model of the hydrogen atom, which is what the scientist believes what the atom is really like. The billiard ball model would say that a hydrogen atom is like a hard shell sphere, like a billiard ball. This would be closest to the Greek conception of an atom. And we know this model is wrong because when you send in light, you expect them all to bounce off. And from the experiments with the real hydrogen atoms, we know it doesn't work that way. So in the modern era, Starting around 1900s or so, people had different ideas about the hydrogen atom. Uh, let me turn this slide off, it's kind of getting annoying. So there was the plum pudding model, which was still wrong. And there was the classical solar system model, <laughs> what happened there? And <laughs> later in the semester, we are going to talk about the Bohr model. Theories and laws play some roles in the construction of a model. Take the plum pudding model for example. This came out of discovery of the electron, which is an electrically charged particle that would pop out of atoms. So people thought, we will talk about electricity in more detail later in the semester. This electron could be bound to the rest of the atom if the rest of the atom was positively charged. This red pudding thing represents that positively charged part of the atom. This was the model they constructed, which was consistent with the theory of electricity, which was very well developed at the time. But then people did more experiments and discovered that atoms had a very tightly packed nucleus. The positively charged part of the atom couldn't be spread out like this. So theorists got to thinking more about what other model would fit the known facts better. They took an inspiration from the solar system, which has discrete objects that are attracted to each other by gravity and thought maybe atom could be like that. They are attracted, but they orbit each other so it doesn't fall in. Um, <laughs> Let me pause and run the simulation more slowly. Um, now, what's going on here? This was the result of physicists applying the existing theories and laws to this solar system model of hydrogen atom. We will get to this later in the semester. But the well-developed theory of electricity and magnetism, we call it electromagnetism, said that an electrical charge moving in a circle radiated away a wave which will carry away energy. Then the law of conservation of energy said that the electron must be losing that energy, which causes it to spiral in. 
and kaboom, collapse onto the proton, like a satellite falling to Earth when it loses orbit. Now, we don't see hydrogen atoms imploding all around us, so this model can't be right either. Either the model is wrong, or the laws and theories we believe in are wrong. And in the hierarchy of things, the smart money, smart money is usually on the laws and theories, which stood the test of time and numerous experiments being correct, and new models not quite being right. Even though the solar system model is wrong, it was a very useful model because it forced the physicists to think outside the box and discover an entirely new area of physics that we now call quantum mechanics. The Bohr model is the first of these quantum mechanical models. Bohr kept all the known laws, theories, and facts. The Bohr model still has a positively charged nucleus, proton, and it assumes the law of conservation of energy. And it assumes that theory of electromagnetism is still correct for the most part. Bohr added one more guess. Let's call it principle of quantization to build this model. His guess was that these orbits had to come in discrete levels. So the electron couldn't gradually spiral in like it did in the classical model. Now, not every pioneering guesses by theoretical physicists are right. They come up with these fun ideas, one every week, most of them are wrong. But Bohr's guess turned out to be right. So we now teach this model in our physics classes. By the end of the semester, we will barely touch on this Bohr model. But even this Bohr model isn't quite right. Uh, you see two more models here. Uh, De Broglie model and Schrodinger model. The Schrodinger atomic model is what we now believe to be the completely correct model of hydrogen atom down to the last detail. But you see that we lost something here um, in the pursuit of correctness. Um, let's call it clarity. <laughs> Uh, except for those of you who took chemistry with electron cloud, orbitals, and all that stuff, this picture probably doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense. Um, this is a trade-off we often need to consider. The trade-off between ease of understanding and accuracy. We will definitely discuss the Bohr model by the end of the semester. I think it's uh, intuitive enough without a lot of math, especially if we have a little bit of time to spend on it. And we'll possibly even go into a little bit into De Broglie model, which hints at the weirdnesses of quantum mechanics. But we won't cover the Schrodinger model, <laughs> because to get something from this model, you need to know something about differential equations uh, that's covered in classes that you take after calculus. <laughs> um, so I hope this uh, example of atomic model made the distinction between models, theories, and laws clearer. These are words that even we scientists sometimes use sloppily interchangeably. But there are times when it is important to draw this distinction. For example, to dismiss a new idea that you don't like, you shouldn't really say, that's just a theory. You should instead say, that's just a model. Well, or not. <laughs> Bye.